I've learned that everybody has the potential to lead people successfully. One key difference between those that can and those that simply want to is the self-awareness to know how you best personally lead a group of people, while having the humility to learn the skills that don't necessarily come natural to you. Understanding your leadership style is, while acquiring new skills, are two very important steps that you can take to maximize your leadership potential. Fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, utilizing your natural innate abilities while also using your acquired skills is a constant balance. It's a constant balancing act. However, by the end of the speech, everybody will be able to walk the tightrope of leadership styles with grace. Who here are my coaches? Based on this, who thinks they are the coaching leadership style? Show of hands. Great. As you can see, that's my top style as well. What I've learned is that the coaches in us can benefit from the pace setters. This is possible because the pace setter sets high expectations and then leads by example. Coaches, on the other hand, give advice, they provide recommendations, and then skill building for their employees, for their teammates. Why this is important for the coach is because it's one thing to walk the walk and give advice and recommendations. It's another to actually talk the talk and show that your recommendations and advice is supported and validated. And we can see this through the Toastmasters Mentorship Program. The mentor is tasked with helping someone fill a role, prepare for speeches, but then the mentor himself actually has to give speeches and fill roles. And so that provides additional validation for the mentee, which shows that, okay, this person knows what they're talking about. The pace setter can benefit from the coach by providing their team with tools, resources, and additional skills, rather than just setting high expectations and, and expecting everybody to follow. There is the pace setter. The next pair is the democratic and bureaucratic leader. Democratic leaders value participation from everybody and consensus among everybody as well. However, this isn't always time efficient. Democratic leader can benefit from the bureaucratic leader by instituting rules, schedules, and even having something so much as a timer role, just giving structure to the way you encourage participation rather than just random hand waving. The bureaucratic leader can gain something from the democratic leader by just simply asking for more feedback instead of handing rules down to the people that they lead. And this tool right here is the best way to do that. You can have a Slack group or GroupMe or any type of team communication tool and just ask, hey guys, what do you think about this? And get everybody's feedback. Very simple. There really isn't a reason you shouldn't be getting feedback from your team in 2018. Related to feedback and team cohesion is the affiliative leaders who can benefit from the authoritative individuals, and vice versa. Affiliative leaders are those who strive for team harmony, for, for everybody to work together, and hold hands and sing kumbaya. <laughs> just kidding. This is actually my third leadership style, and I really just prefer cooperation among my team. Us affiliative leaders can benefit from the authoritative leaders by vision and performance standards. What I mean by that is the affiliative leader already does a great job of establishing that strong team cohesion. So everyone works well together. <coughs> Where do they go? Using the authoritative leader's ability to create a strong vision and high performance standards gives them some direction. And then it gives them steps on how to execute on that vision. Conversely, authoritative leaders can learn from the affiliative leaders by actually instituting that team cohesion. They have the vision, they have the standards and set in place, but if you don't have a team that can execute on that vision, that can meet that vision and execute on those standards, you're not going to go anywhere. The final pair is the altruistic and 
innovative leaders. And once again, these can cross-pollinate and mutually benefit from one another. Altruistic leaders have some of the strongest bonds between their teams because they focus on serving the needs of those that they work for rather than they work for the leader. Innovative leaders are those that embrace risks and challenges and new ideas. Altruistic leaders can learn from an innovator by actually asking for new ideas and answers to those complex solutions. It's effective for an altruistic leader because there's already that camaraderie and that rapport built <clears throat> excuse me, with each person on the team because they're already dedicated to serving their needs. And so they're going to feel comfortable with expressing them themselves and sharing their ideas. On the other hand, innovative leaders can work to actually serve the needs of their team, which will make them comfortable sharing those ideas and expressing them. While they may enjoy gathering ideas and, and solving complex solutions, if no one feels comfortable with it, they're not going to express themselves on that. It's important to recognize that each leadership style has its own pros and cons to it. It's also important to realize that no one style is going to solve every problem that you may have. And so it's essential to you as a leader to maximize your potential to take bits and pieces from each style and adapt it into your own pretty much hybrid style. Madam Toastmaster.